to the Price of Business here on this Tuesday morning. I am Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business, spending time with Frank Granite. Frank is a uh, pharmacist, and uh, he's working with me on a project that we call the Price of ADHD Business. Uh, it's a, a project we've developed to uh, address a, a huge and growing concern about the over-medication of our young people out there. And Frank, uh, tell us a little bit about your organization that you're with, and then introduce our guest today. Uh, great to be here, Kevin, with you. Uh, my organization is the Coalition Against Over-Medicating Our Youth, that's C-A-O-O-Y, uh, dot org. And uh, our guest today, uh, she's a, what attracted us to her profile is just a tremendous speaker, uh, a speaker for stress relief and nutrition. Uh, she comes to us, Kevin, from uh, Toronto, Canada. She's a registered nutritional consultant pra- practitioner. And she's also the author of Frazzled, Hurried Women, Your Success Relief Guide to Thriving. And this is not only just for uh, families. This is about corporate America and how uh, they need to understand uh, the stress uh, that's affecting their business. So today we have Rosalie Moscow from Toronto. Uh, Rosalie, great to be uh, have you on our program. Thanks so much. It's great to be with you. Yeah, yeah, we're glad to have you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your work. Well, I've been um, in the last 20 years speaking in the workplace about stress relief also uh, and nutrition. I've also worked with uh, various doctors um, one a psychiatrist who uh, uses nutrition in her practice for her patients, and um, but I'm really also very excited about the uh, foundation that I represent as uh, vice chair and chair of their mindful campaign. It's um, orthomolecular molecular treatment of mental illness and uh, using nutri- nutritional therapy to help all forms, and it's uh, isfmentalhealth.org. So I'm really uh, happy to be here to share a lot with you today. Yeah, Rosalie, tell us, by the way, I'm a huge fan of, of always taking holistic approaches before you pull out the drugs. So often a holistic approach can solve so many problems that uh, drugs can't. And often drugs have a trade-off. You're, you're, you're mitigating this problem and replacing it with a whole new series of other problems. Uh, and so whatever you can take a, a nutritional approach, I'm all for that. But tell us a little bit about your credentials. Well, I'm a, uh, I attended the Workplace Wellness and Health Promotion Program at Centennial College in Toronto, and then I taught stress management at the college. And I've been working, uh, speaking in the workplace for companies, associations, uh, maybe 800 talks in the last uh, 18, 19 years, and uh, working and uh, became a uh, registered nutritional consultant practitioner, holistic nutritionist from the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. I've worked with um, medical doctors, their patients, and uh, there are many medical doctors who are interested in this nutritional approach. One of them is a psychiatrist that I've worked for. And uh, so that's what I've been doing for the last number of years. I used to work in the area with children, uh, wellness for children, as a children's singer and performer, writing songs for kids and and performing all over. Uh, So it's uh, it's a passion of mine to uh, help children. Very good. Go ahead, Frank. You know what, Rosalie, you know, you, you told us that, uh, like in your lectures to businesses especially, and as well mm-hmm. with families, you know, you talk about the brain-gut connection and why corporate America needs to wake up and listen to the facts about how stress can uh, be resolved when we get into the brain-gut connection. And uh, I'm, I'm more on the clinical side of the program and Kevin's on the business side, but I'd like to mm-hmm. ask you, do you, how do you incorporate that brain-gut connection when you're talking to the businesses as well as uh, when you lecture to families, et cetera? Well, it's really important for people to understand that uh, a lot of people who do have a stress and uh, many of them have uh, digestive issues. It's very common. And why is that? It's because there's this vagus nerve that connects the brain all the way down to the gut. We have two brains, one we think with, and the other one's in the gut, the ENS, the enteric nervous system, and starts in the tissue lining of your esophagus, your stomach, small intestine, all the way down to your colon, and Two-thirds of the body serotonin, which is a happy neurotransmitter, uh, which is normally found in the brain, but it's, most is found in the gut. So your, your, your gut is talking to your brain. If, it's, if it gets food that's making it unhappy, you're, you will feel unhappy. And um, so if you have a, a, an irritant, if you're, you're having a lot of food allergies, it can affect your mental functioning. And it's uh, been actually uh, researched by uh, Gershwin, in his book, The Second Brain, but and many other. You can just check it on it's, uh, online. And uh, I soon uncovered that many people with mental illness have digestive issues, 
and uh, it's really feeding the, the brain. The uh, right foods can make you happy, and the wrong foods, processed foods, high sugar foods, can make you feel anxious or depressed. Yeah, yeah. all of those, a lot of a lot of those foods you mentioned are are simply stimulants. You know, and it, it, it's more, and it, it's more than your body wants or needs. Uh, it, you know, you might enjoy the taste, but the ta- the consequences of the taste can be uh, pretty lethal sometimes, and and certainly yeah. miserable. Certainly make you miserable. Well, they're, they're addictive. That's the problem. Every, you know, I mean, that's uh, everybody likes the taste, and so and then they almost like you have to have them. I don't know if you saw Super Size Me, but it showed that uh, that person got so addicted to the taste of fast food when he did a little uh, you know study uh, like on himself, so only eating fast food for a month, he got so depressed and sick and. So you you know the body can only take so much uh, non nutrients. We're we're supposed to have nutrients to survive to live. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here, Kevin. Kevin, here's a good statistic. And at, at my uh, psychiatric hospital in Southeast Michigan, over eighty percent of our adult population that comes into our psychiatric hospital, uh, Rosalie, over eighty percent have some form of digestive dysfunction. Mm-hmm. So the point mm-hmm. is relevant. So corporate America needs to understand this as they develop their. Uh, you know, HR policies to reduce strict, you know, to reduce the anxiety and stress in the workplace. Uh, you know, we we got to go forward and uh, you know expand on that. But you know, get another question would be, once you get these risk factors, what's that step by step? You talk about it in the book. Uh, once uh, an employee or a family member can assess and uh, get those risk factors taken care of, what do they do next? How do they eliminate uh, stress and anxiety? And, and well, you know, pressure? it is a two-way street in the workplace. We have to have uh, employers who are fair and who don't overload uh, certain employees or, or expect too much out of one person. But at first, I think for the person, they need to get someone to talk to. You know, perhaps it's your spouse or other family member or maybe an HR person at work, a manager if it's appropriate, a psychologist, a religious leader, someone who can help you figure out how to address difficulties in the workplace because workplace stress is one of the largest uh, reported stressors for about, uh, I don't know, two three hundred billion dollars in America, I believe, right now, Kevin. Is that right? Three hundred yeah. billion dollar uh, price tag. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's, inc- it's, it's pretty uh, impressive one at that. Someone's making money off of it, but boy, at what cost? Yeah, and and a lot. But people have to learn to not to isolate themselves, and managers have to listen to uh, you know their their people and uh, watch for stress in them and themselves as well. But there's many things that people can do to to gain stress relief coping skills as well. I have to wrap it up. Thanks to both of you. I appreciate it so much. Rosalie, one more time, your your website. Healthinharmony.com. People can email me. I'll send them a a healthy nutrition booklet. Uh, You know, just Rosalie at healthinharmony.com. Check isfmentalhealth.org or mindfulcharity.ca. Lots of information for parents about the healthy brain. Frank, uh, also, uh, your website, and by the way, you'll see ongoing articles for our ongoing series on the price of ADHD business at usadareview.com and priceofbusiness.com, but your website. C-A-O-O-Y dot org, and uh, take a look and uh, get the information there to help people get back on the behavioral health pathway. Thanks so much to both of you. When I come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here shows up over there at USAToReview.com, and you're listening to The Price of Business.